Welcome to Where to Go. And we're looking at Psalm 19 as we discover the value of God's word. And verse 8 says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. This verse shows us two attributes of God's word. It says that the word of God is a statute, and then it says the word of God is a commandment. When we say the word of God is a statute, it means that it is a precept. That simply means it is the rule by which we practically live our lives. The word of God is our practical guide in every area of our lives. You know, many times when we think of God's word, we think it's only preparing us for the hereafter, maybe to go to heaven and live a life uh, with God. Yes, it does that. But apart from preparing us for heaven, the word of God also helps us to live our lives practically in all areas of our lives, from our marriages to how we work, to our work ethic, to how we handle money. All of that is covered by the word of God. And it is the precept of the Lord. It's the practical guide of God for how we should live our lives. And it says when the word of God is the statutes, they are right. In other words, when we read the word of God and we see what it prescribes or how we practically live our lives, it is the right way to live our lives. When God says don't lie, he's right. If he says don't commit adultery, he is right. If he says that treat the stranger right, that is right. If he says treat the orphan and the widow right, that is right. So the precepts of the Lord, the statutes of God, they are right. So don't ever look at the Bible and say, oh, God doesn't know the world I'm living in. <laughs> he created the world you're living in, and so his statutes are right. And it says that when we obey his statutes, there is joy in our hearts. It rejoices the heart. Then it says also that the word of God is a commandment. Uh, and that's a heavy one because we live in an era where people don't like commandments. You know, we want to be appealed to. We want everything to be a suggestion. We don't want absolutes. We don't want somebody to say, this is it, do it. But God is not a man. and He doesn't just make suggestions to us. He makes commandments. And isn't it interesting that when we look at everything that works well in our existence, it does so because of commandments. The, the universe itself operates on absolute commandments that are constant everywhere in the entire universe. The laws of physics are permanent commandments. And even when we look at technology, the, the processing units in our computers, in our phones, in our gadgets, they all obey commandments. So if commandments make things work so well, the universe works so well, and our gadget works so well, why don't people accept the commandment of God as that which makes us humans work so well? The commandments of the Lord, the passage says, are pure. We understand human beings have deficiencies, so their commandments can be deficient. But God has no deficiency, so his commandments are pure. There is zero defect when we obey God's commandments. And when we obey his commandments, we, we become better people. The passage says it enlightens our eyes. That simply means it ennobles us. It civilizes us. The word of God makes us better people. It makes us more uh, improved versions of ourselves. The word of God enlightens our eyes. So when God speaks to us and gives us a command, he is making us better people. Is there a command of God that is so hard for you to obey? I dare you trust God and obey him and see the benefit it will bring to your life in every area of your life, practically making you live a better life. The word of God is our statute and our command. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I accept your word as my command. Thank you for filling my heart with joy as I obey you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you for spending the time with me. I'm Pastor Mensah Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.